everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my May wrap up. So I read a total of six books in May and three short stories, which is actually very good for me because I've been averaging about four to five books a month throughout this entire year. So six books is pretty good. I am going to be doing some reviews separate from this video on some of these books. So I might not talk a lot about some of these books. Uh, but other than that, let's get started. So the first book I read was is called Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Now this book is set in the 1970s. It follows a Chinese American family um, who finds out one day that their daughter Lydia is dead. And it's all about how it, this event upends their entire family whose relationships were already tense from the very beginning. This book is mostly focused on the mother and father of the group. Marilyn is a white American and her husband, uh, James Lee, I think his name is called, is a Chinese American. And uh, it talks, this book talks a, a lot about uh, racial issues and uh, gender politics. It, I would describe it as a literary book for beginners because it focuses a lot on the character's internal thoughts and the character's internal developments, but uh, it's also a page turner at the same time. Now I gave this book a three and a half out of five stars. It's it was okay. It, the pacing and the transitioning were definitely good, but I thought that the themes were sort of like spoon fed to you, and uh, I'll explain more about that in my review of this book. But uh, there was a lack of tension throughout because. The author just kept really explaining what she was trying to get at instead of you figuring out what she was trying to say. Um, I did like the exploration of the family dynamics and uh, all of that, but overall it was kind of a little bit lackluster for me. Actually at the end of this book I was saying to myself that I'm pretty sure this is the, exactly the type of book that Reese Witherspoon would adapt into like an HBO show or something like that. And I was sort of right. She, Reese Witherspoon is actually producing the uh, book Little Fires Everywhere, also by Celeste Ng. But Everything I Never Told You is actually also going to be a Netflix movie starring Julia Roberts as the main character. So. I was kind of right there. But anyways, I'll talk more about this one in my review. The next book I read is called uh, The Bride Test by Helen Huang. And guys, I gave this book a I gave this book a three stars, but my star rating has um, nothing to do with how important this book is to me on a more cultural context. So uh, I have read a lot of Vietnamese American writers previously and a few Vietnamese uh, books in general. This one is special in the sense that the other books that I've read by Vietnamese American authors are things like the Refugees and The Sympathizer, both by Viet Thanh Nguyen. I've also read um, Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vuong, as well as Inside Out and Back Again. This one is about uh, immigration, the immigration experience, but it's also a children's book as well. I've also read Catfish and Mandela by Andrew X. Pham. And a couple of other ones, but all of these are actually very dark books about mostly the Vietnam War and a little bit about the Vietnamese immigration experience. Now, that's all fine and good, and I realize that the Vietnam War is a definitive part of being a Vietnamese person. However, 
it is not everything. And this book is a romance book. It is the almost the exact opposite of all those other books. It is light, it is charming, and although it does talk about what it means to be a Vietnamese immigrant, it doesn't talk extensively about the war, it doesn't dive deep into like the atrocities and things like that. It is simply a romance book between a Vietnamese and a Vietnamese American, which I really liked. I have never seen myself in a romance book like this and it was just so refreshing. I just realized I wanted so much more of these books after I read it. Um, it is essentially about a, a Vietnamese person, Stella. She lives in Viet, obviously lives in Vietnam, and her love interest, Kai, who lives in America. The, Kai's mother really wants him to get married. He does not want anything to do with romance or love, so she decides she's gonna go to Vietnam and try to find a good bride for him. Um, and in Vietnam, she finds Stella, Stella is a janitor working um, in Vietnam, but she really wants to have a better life for herself and her daughter, Jade. She agrees to accompany Kai's mother to America. She has to win Kai over in the span of the summer or she's gonna be sent back to Vietnam. Despite that shady and somewhat sketchy um, summary, this book is, again, very charming. I love the characters. The characters are so well written together and apart as well. I'll be talking more about this in my little mini book reviews video, but it was the perfect summer beach read. I love that it explores more than just the romance itself. It explores what it means to make a living for yourself, what it means to uh, forge, forge your own path, uh, and uh, it's great. I really want more books about these, but more on that later. The next book I read is called Normal People by Sally Rooney. Now this one is my favorite book of May, possibly one of my favorite books of the entire year. It is wonderful. This one was nominated for numerous awards. I think it was longlisted for the Men Booker Prize. I don't know if it won or not. It's something like that. And this is a coming of age novel about our two main characters, Marianne and Connell. Uh, they live in Ireland and they are friends in school and they subsequently form a kind of illicit relationship. Um, and it kind of follows their relationship over the span of a few years from high school to college to a little bit like to the end of college and I freaking love this book. If you know anything about me you will know that I love a good coming-of-age movie, I love good coming-of-age tv shows, movies, anything coming-of-age I freaking love. Like actually one of my favorite movies of recent years is called The Edge of Seventeen which is a coming-of-age movie starring Hayley Seinfeld. But anyways, I love coming of age and this one was an exceptional coming of age novel. It's, it's a literary novel that delves into a lot of topics as well. It touches on class, it touches on race, it touches on gender, um, but it does so in such an offhand way through the real eyes and the lens of these two characters. And uh, what's also interesting about this book is that it doesn't have any dialogue quotations and uh, every single conversation flows so seamlessly. Every statement means something. No sentence, no word is wasted. And she captures so intimately and so well what it really means to be a young person and what it means to enter a relationship as a young person and it's absolutely brilliant. I wholeheartedly cared so intimately about these characters' lives and you feel as though these characters exist um, even beyond this book and even after you've finished this book. Um, and I'll be, we'll be touching more about this in my review, so look out for that, but I absolutely recommend this book. It is brilliant. I'm 
I gave it a four out of five stars. So. Next, I read a couple of short stories that were nominated for the Hugo and Nebula Award. I read some of them, but not all of them. I do plan on reading more of them as the year as the year goes on, but these were the three I did manage to read. So the first one is called The Last Banquet of Temporal Confections by Tina Connolly. This one is my favorite of, out of the whole bunch of sort of short stories that I read. It's about a taste tester who works for this tyrant king in this, you know, kingdom. I loved this one. It was so creative. It really touches on, um, it's, it's just so creative. It follows uh, this taste tester and you really get to see uh, her whole background and her backstory and all these characters with it. And you really get to see the history of this kingdom even though it only takes place in the span of one night. And it's so fun and magical and uh, it has a very creative and satisfying ending as well. Out of all the short stories I recommend today, this is the one you have to read. It is so good. Um, so there's that one. The next one I read is called The Witch's Guide to Escape by Alex E. Harrow. I gave this one a four out of five stars as well. This one was really good. This is following a library in a southern town and this library is actually run by witches. And we follow this one particular witch as she follows and sort of keeps tabs on this young boy that keeps coming back and forth to the library. And she kind of suspects that he is having a rough home life. So she kind of like pushes these, subtly like pushes these books towards him and trying to help him find his way into the world. I love this one. This one was so light and charming. It has this element of magic and wonder to it and uh, you feel as though you really know this boy even though you are in the head of the witch who is just observing him and he basically has no dialogue in this story at all but you feel as though you really know him and I really liked that aspect. This short story was great, highly recommend. And then the last short story I read was called The Stet by Sarah Gailey. This one was really interesting because it's written in an essay format, you know, like the ones you write for school. And it's, it's written as though you have comments from the author's professor and the author's comments along with it. So you kind of see their emotions and their thoughts as they are reading the essay. Um, and this essay also has a twist to it because the author actually had a daughter who was killed by, the, by an AI car. And so that part was also very interesting. It was a little annoying because you, every time you read a sentence, it would end with a footnote and then you would have to read the footnote in order to go back to the story and read more. And that was kind of annoying because you have to go back and forth and it disrupts the narrative flow. But once you get used to it, it's totally fine. I also really liked the emotional escalation as you continue down the essay. It just gets, it just gets more emotional, more emotional, more emotional until it reaches this kind of crescendo and I really liked it. Um, it didn't, did it deliver entirely? Not really, but it was definitely worth a read. So I gave this one a three and a half out of five stars. Now back to the books I read. The next book I read was called The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. This book is a very popular self-help book all about kind of freeing your emotions and your habitual thoughts from limiting your consciousness. Now, I've read a lot of self-help books this year and this one was kind of the least helpful. This book can basic, basically be summed up in three words, let it go. He basically says, you know, you have to let go of your feelings, your emotions and the things that are limiting your potential. 
And he continually says this. He says, let it go, let it go, let it go. But the examples that he gives are very small. And I wanted him to touch upon how this method that he uses is employed for bigger issues rather than just, you know, like the mild embarrassment of tripping on the sidewalk. Um, I do think he has uh, some good points in here, especially about he creates this analogy about having a thorn in your arm and he gives you two options. You either pull the thorn or you kind of walk through life dodging everything that could possibly touch this thorn and hurt you. And this is kind of a metaphor for, you know, real life. Um, you, people, people try to get rid of their symptoms um, and try to get rid of these feelings of loneliness or these feelings of insecurity. But what they, what they're missing on is that they're not taking out this or taking out the root issue of loneliness or rejection. In that sense, it was helpful. But other than that, it was really repetitive. I wouldn't really recommend it unless you are a beginner with self-help books. So I gave this one kind of like a two, two and a half out of five stars. And then the, the last two books, getting into the home run here, I have Fun Home by Alison Bechtel. Now, Fun Home is about Alison Bechtel, and this is a graphic memoir. Alison Bechtel was the person who wrote the, who created the Bechtel test. And if you know the Bechtel test, it's about, um, it, it's, a, it's a test for movies and it's exploration of female characters. In order for a movie to pass the Bechtel test, you have to have two female characters in a movie who talk to each other about something other than a man. And I really liked this book, but it had its problems. First of all, the timeline was just super confusing. It goes back and forth between her childhood and her adulthood, and it does so so rapidly that I don't know where I am in her life as she's telling the story. Um, I really liked the parts where she learns about coming out and I really liked the parts where she specifically writes about her relationship with her father and how tenuous and mysterious her father was even though she lived with him. And you as a reader can sense through the illustrations, this, this book is written in black and white. You can see how mysterious her father is through the illustrations and even as even as the book ends he is, is as mysterious in the beginning of the book as he was at the end of the book and you really sense that the author is trying to is trying to find out who her father really is but really accepts that in the end that he was as mysterious as she ever knew him now i did uh, like it but then I also thought that the timeline was very confusing and because of that I gave it a kind of like a three out of five stars. Mm -hmm. And then the last book I read is After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have read three Taylor Jenkins Reid books at this point and I've actually pretty much liked all of them somewhat. Here's the thing, when I go into a Taylor Jenkins Reid book I know what I'm getting at. She has a tendency to kind of dramatize things a little bit and uh, near like the end of the books that she writes it just turns into a cliche mess. But her beginnings and her middles are very very strong and I really like it. I This one was about a marriage in particular, an exploration of marriage is about two characters, Lauren and Spencer. At the beginning of the book, we follow them in their college years and when they first meet. And then it kind of skips forward in time, a few years, a few years, months, and years, chronicling their relationship and really finding out where it went wrong. 
Now, at the present time, they are in a trial, trial separation. They are separated from each other for one year and they can't talk to each other at all. And in that time, they have to reevaluate their relationship, their marriage, yada, yada, yada. I really liked how Taylor Jenkins Breed talked about the bitter resentments that grow when you don't speak up in a relationship and the little things that annoy you but and then like kind of spiral out of control as time as time goes on what i also liked was that taylor jenkins we talked about different kinds of love as well even though one of them she kind of revoked at the end of the book which i didn't really like um she paints a picture of a marriage However, she doesn't paint a very good picture of the characters. The characters are there to kind of propel this theme and device of marriage. And I wish that the characters were given more time to develop into their own, into their own character before kind of putting them together and trying to write a story about marriage. The ending, even if I don't agree with it personally, I kind of see where she was going with it. Um, and then the resolution was a little lackluster to me, but it was all right. So all in all, this one was okay, but I will continue reading Taylor Jenkins Reid's book because they're so quick. This one's a really good page turner and uh, it's a great summer read as well. So those were all the books and things that I read this month. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Um, but otherwise, I'll see you in my review video. Bye!